Hi, I'm Gary Edwards, the Preserve Manager here at Greystones Preserve, right outside of Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, in the heart of the Pocono Mountains. And um, Gary, we've had a lot of fun today learning a little bit about Greystone Preserve. And one of the things that really interested me is you mentioned that um, you had gotten to know Kurt Gowdy, who had kind of been, a, I guess, an idol of yours as a young man wanting to get into fly fishing. Can you tell me a little bit how, how you met him and, and what that relationship grew into? Sure. You know, as a kid, when I was maybe 14, 15 or so, all my buddies and I would sit around on Sunday afternoon and watch Kurt Gowdy on the American Sportsman talk about his native Wyoming and we'd all say hey when we get out of school we're gonna move to Wyoming well I got out of school and a few months later it was off to Laramie Wyoming which is where Kurt was from uh, the Laramie Cheyenne area and then as time went by later on in life uh, got interested in really being in this business and Kurt still owned some radio stations out there and the manager of one of his stations was a friend of mine so he invited Robin and I over for lunch when Kurt was there, and Kurt very graciously took Robin and I to a sports show in Denver where he was doing some seminars on the American Sportsman, introduced us to dozens of people. Uh, later on in life, we fished together several times, used to be in contact with him all the time, and he started mentoring me or encouraging me more in the business and in TV. And then it, it really went full circle that Robin and I had a chance to not only be in the business but to wind up having a fly fishing television show called Vacations on the Fly which airs on PBS and Kurt was very supportive of that and gave us a lot of good advice and it was just really like a dream come true to start out as a little kid watching Kurt Gowdy and wind up knowing him, fishing with him and then in a smaller way doing what he did. What was, uh, tell me about some of the fishing expeditions that you had with Kurt. The main one that stands out in my mind is we were fishing on the Little Laramie River about 20 miles west of Laramie, Wyoming on a, a private ranch and it was a stream that Kurt said he grew up fishing, always enjoyed that stream and by now my son was 23, 24 years old and managing this particular ranch had turned into a, a sport ranch for hunting and fishing. And we had the privilege of taking Kurt out there and spending a whole afternoon just talking about him, talking about old times, talking about Ted Williams, all the things they had done when they were younger men, and just to stand there and watch him. I mean, by now he was 80-ish, a little, little hard to walk around, but once we got him set on the stream, he just peeled out that line and with virtually no effort laying flies out there and boom, 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 catching fish after fish. Uh, always had that stuff of a cigar talking like that, like Kurt Gowdy. Sounds like you drank too much scotch and smoked too many cigars, but I guess all those years of being an announcer for the, the Boston uh, baseball team and stuff, it just it was just like an icon in, in the industry. It was a sad day when he, when he passed last year. So, do um, you think you'd be where you are today if you hadn't have known Kurt? I don't think so. I don't think I would have ever pursued the leaving the East as a young man and heading to Wyoming and living in Wyoming, Colorado, fishing Montana, Idaho, all those Rocky Mountain states if it wasn't for what he instilled in me as a young man. And then when I was at that pivotal age of I've got to make a career choice, am I going to go into the outdoors or am I going to try to go into real business, <laughs> make some real money? Uh, he was a good influence, a uh, nice fellow. And just one more question uh, before I let you go here is, I guess your wife and yourself came to Greystone here just a short time ago. What brought you to the Poconos and uh, you know, what are you doing here uh, at this location? Well, we got here about eight months ago. The, this club has been in one family since 1934. A few years ago, the dad passed away, and there's a brother and sister that own it. And they were looking for someone in this business to try to help organize it and, and manage it. And as you undoubtedly know, there's not a whole lot of couples in this business. And they tracked us down through the internet and meeting my son, who was working at the L.L. Bean store there at the Saucon Valley Mall as the general manager and one thing led to another and they invited us to come take a look and 
here we are, and it's, it's a beautiful club, 4,000 acres, three and a half miles of mud run stream, unsurpassed fly fishing, very private and wild experience, and it's a little something different to all the members. Some come for the fishing, some for the hiking, some just for the solitude. It's, uh, I really didn't think there'd be a place this wild just an hour away from places like Allentown and two hours from Philadelphia. It's truly a, a little paradise out here in the middle of the Poconos. And you're glad to be here. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. And excited for the program that uh, we're trying to make a good fishery even better. Uh, I act primarily just like a golf course as a golf pro. I'm the local fishing pro. Help the kids learn how. Help anybody new that wants to learn more about fly fishing and, and even some of the guys that have been doing it for years just like you hire a golf pro to maybe try to improve your your swing maybe work with me for an hour or two try to tweak your cast learn how to read water better whatever the case might be but this is pretty much like a country club but instead of golf being the attraction it's fly fishing for trout